countdown, we have the secret tunnel system. I know I've talked about this before, but Walt Disney created a whole underground tunnel system for the characters to have a break. And it's for them to secretly get around the park without walking everywhere in costume. This way, this all preserves the magical feel of Disney. But some employees shared what really goes on down there. First off, they said that the tunnel system is fairly confusing, and on a number of occasions, people have gotten lost down there. One employee said that they had just got a job playing a Disney mascot character and went down into the tunnels and had no clue where to go. He went to ask other employees for help, but since he was new, they kind of just brushed him off. Another employee revealed that some of the cast members like to get it on during their breaks down in the tunnel system. So while you're up above having fun, they're down below having fun just in a different way, if you understand what I'm getting at. Coming in at number nine, we have the waiting lines. But before I go any further, if you guys are liking this video so far, make sure to give it a big thumbs up because it really helps us out. I think the one flaw about Disney are its lines. Seriously, nobody's got time for that. But a couple of years ago, a huge scandal broke out involving Disney and their waiting lines. Basically, rich families were paying tour guides that have access to these special passes for the disabled. Basically, with this pass, you get brought right to the top of the line because Disney wants guests with disabilities to have a great time. But wealthy, able people were abusing this, which is absolutely sickening. Can't believe people were actually doing this just to scam the system. Moving on to number eight, we have the overnighter. For this next point, let's move back along to Disney's tunnel system. So remember I talked about how new employees often get lost down in the tunnels? Well, there's this creepy urban legend about this happening to a new employee. So he finished his shift and went down to the tunnels to change. As he was making his way out, the lights in the tunnel shut off and he was in the complete darkness. Now he had trouble already finding the exit with the lights on. Now with the lights off, it was even more difficult. He ended up wandering around the tunnel system for hours before collapsing from exhaustion. He ended up staying there overnight. His coworkers found him in the morning. He was freezing cold and super scared. So now this story is kind of used to scare new employees. In our seventh spot, we have the suspicious death. So in 2012, a man's body was found near the Mickey and Friends parking structure at Disneyland. Police just assumed the man took his own life, but no witnesses ever reported seeing this man jump. Now what's weird is that I tried to search more into this case, but I couldn't find anything. We don't know what truly happened to this man and how he passed away which is a little suspicious to me. In our sixth spot, we have Yes Man. So this story was shared by a former Disney employee that worked near the Indiana Jones ride. So his job was to dress up as an adventurer and just stand around. But he said he was often attacked by kids and Disney told him that he just kind of had to take it. So these kids would often be super psyched to go on this ride. And so they were in costume and had plastic weapons. He said on a number of occasions, kids would come up to him and literally whip him with their weapons. Or he would get asked to duel and he always had to say yes. So kids would just be jabbing him with their plastic swords. Yeah, that's not a job I would like. We're now at our fifth and halfway mark with Winnie the Pooh gets sued. I thought that was so clever. Like I was typing that and I came up with that. And I'm like, pat on the back. Good job, Lindsay. Anyway, in 1978, a guest at the park sued Disney and a cast member, claiming that the cast member playing Winnie the Pooh slapped their daughter. In 1981, their case was brought to court and the cast member showed up in the Winnie the Pooh costume. He argued that their daughter was tugging on his costume. He turned around and accidentally knocked her over. And then in court, he proceeded to show the jury his costume's arms, saying it's not even physically possible for him to do that in the first place, you know, with his little limited movement. In the end, Disney ended up winning, but still, what a wild day at court. And I love how he showed up in costume. Coming in at number four, we have the deadly ride. On June 26, 2007, a female guest passed away on the rock and roller coaster of Vec Aerosmith ride at Disneyland Paris. After the ride was done, people noticed her unconscious. The paramedics arrived, but failed to revive her. Sadly, she passed away. Now in articles, it said that the ride wasn't going to reopen until they found out how and why she passed. But there's no follow-up articles outlining what went wrong on the ride. 
And it's not like she was 80 years old and had health conditions. No, she was fairly young. I just wish Disney let us know what happened, cause the ride has been up and running ever since, but no official statement was ever released. In our third spot, we have Disney's jail. Did you know that Disney has its own specific jail for criminals? Yeah, if you're caught breaking any of Disney's rules, you'll be escorted to Disney jail. Employees describe it as an underground room with bars on the windows. There's no bright colors or Mickey's decorating the area. Now, what causes you to be sent to Disney jail? Well, if you get too rowdy or too intoxicated at the park, if you smoke certain substances at the park, or if you're caught shoplifting. You, you get the picture. Disney is actually very strict when it comes to this. People caught shoplifting aren't even given a warning sometimes. Instead, they're just sent straight to their jail. From there, you can be fined, kicked out of the park, banned from ever coming back to the park, or all of the above. In our second spot, we have Blake Lively's arrest. Believe it or not, but actress Blake Lively was once sent to Disney jail. Yeah, so basically her and her brother both snuck into Disneyland's park. What they did is put hairspray on the stamps of somebody that came out of the park and then put their hands together and that transferred the stamp. Then they got to go in the park for free. Except Blake and her brother were caught by an undercover Disney cop and sent to Disney jail. I'm telling you, Disney has way too many undercover cops. Like they're everywhere which is a good thing for safety, but also kind of a bad thing because, you know, they're watching your every move. And in a number one spot, we have the battle. This story comes from a Disney employee that worked at a store at the Disney park near the Indiana Jones ride. One time, 30 kids ran into the store and each grabbed a toy sword from the bin, you know, so that they could be just like Indiana Jones. But then the kids started attacking the two workers in the store with their swords. And obviously the workers aren't allowed to like yell at the kids or panic or fight back. So they just let the kids attack them until their parents noticed and called them off. By then he says his arms were already covered in cuts and bruises and he was bleeding. Yeah, maybe those weapons should be like placed behind the counter or something, you know, so things like that don't happen. Or maybe Disney should just have a better policy, I don't know. Starting us off in at number 10 is cast members who get to experience the rides after dark. And by get to, I mean have to. They're absolutely forced to. Well, apparently some of these rides are absolutely 100% haunted, especially it's a small world. I remember I was stuck in that ride one time and I wanted to absolutely kill myself because it was so annoying, it was on repeat, it's so repetitive. Well, multiple cast members have reported seeing the little animated dolls blink or appear here in entirely different places long after that they've been unplugged and switched off for the night. Honestly, there's just something about the ride that creeps me out and a reason why I just won't go on this ride ever again. And at number nine is the poor employee who had a little bit of a game with Walt Disney himself after he died. A bit of backstory. Whenever Walt was at the parks, the staff would always make sure that the light in the window of the fire station was turned on to let everyone know, you know, Walt's here, let's uh, be on our best behavior. Well, once he died, they turned off the lights. But one day, a staff member was cleaning the room where the lamp was and they saw that it was turned on. She turned it off, turned around, and when she turned back, it was switched on again. This would freak me out. She again turned it off. I wouldn't do that. I would just run like crazy, not look back, put in my resignation, and I'd probably go work for um, Microsoft or something. Well, something inside her was telling her that Walt was letting her know that, hey, I'm, I'm still here. I'm still much alive in this park. Well, since then, the lights always stay on to let everyone know that Walt is looking down on the parks. So everyone there better be on their best behavior. Following up at number eight is when a Disney employee noticed that there was a mysterious box chained to a lamppost. Anyone who's seen any type of crime shows know that if there's a mysterious package anywhere, it might be a bomb and to clear the area and call 911. This employee jumped into action and did just that because the last thing anybody wants is an active bomb and in the happiest place on earth, filled with excited kids and their families. Turns out, thankfully, it wasn't a bomb. It was just some family's lunch and they just didn't want to carry it around with them. But seriously guys, I don't understand wanting to carry your lunch around. I mean, at that point, just go out and buy lunch in a restaurant. Just go buy a turkey leg somewhere. Well, I guess on this day, it would save a lot of people a lot of stress. Okay, next up at number seven spot is the employee who had to help break up a fight that could have ended really poorly. 
poorly. Apparently a group of 20 year olds were getting rowdy and started punching each other in the arms. But one of them missed and ended up psh, punching a 12 year old girl right in the face. Is this real life right now? How do you mess that up? Which is, well this is bad enough, but imagine doing that and then realizing that the little girl's dad is right there. It's like, psh, and then right behind her is, is this big dude. Well this guy, he was actually six foot four, over 300 pounds, and really mad. R like really mad. It, it literally took four security guards and two deputies to pull the dad off the guy who punched his daughter, but not after bloodying up himself. Number six today goes to a worker who might have told an exorcism at the haunted mansion. Apparently before the ride even opened up, an employee heard music coming from the walls of the seance room. Mysterious music is bad enough from any room, but a seance room? Especially when there are rumors that the spell book was a real one, which was once owned by witches. Well that is class A nope material for me. Instead of cleansing the place, this employee decided to just install speakers to drown out the noise, but I guess whatever helps you sleep at night, I guess. Halfway through, in at number five is a staff member who discovered the body of a man who had died in his hotel room. I guess cleaning staff must have found him, but it was apparent that he had taken his own life. The room's windows and entrance were covered by those pardon our dust signs. Uh, I've never seen that kind of sign before, like pardon, uh, we, we didn't clean this place, uh, don't mind it. <laughs> and there was an important meet and greet to distract people from the room as police arrived on the scene. No matter what I encountered in my life, I feel like finding someone else's body would probably be the scariest thing to happen. In at number four is the employee who had to stop a situation that could have ended a lot worse than it did. This group of drunk people were on the Dumbo ride with their infant when they decided that um, it would be a good idea to reenact the Lion King. Yeah, you guys know where I'm going with this one. You guys know what I'm talking about. Well, they took off the seatbelt of the kid and they held their hands like Rafiki did to Simba during the circle of life. Well, the ride operator emergency stopped the ride and the entire group was escorted out of the park and arrested as soon as they stepped out of the gates. So did they have to wait until they were completely out of the park to be arrested? Because I would try to resist and never leave. Like I would never try to cross that line of like Disney exit, Disney exit. Next up, number three is an employee who had to deal with a watery attack. Well during a jungle cruise everything was going pretty well until suddenly one lady entirely lost her cool at the guy sitting in front of her. Mind you he hadn't done anything other than enjoy his ride because he's in the happiest place on earth. Well she started to scream at him and then lunged at him clawing his face and kicking him. The skipper on board had to fire four rounds from his pistol into the air to warn other boats rushed back to the dock and tried to pull the lady off of the guy. Well apparently half the people on board were trying to help as well. When medical and security arrived they finally got her secured and into an ambulance. Turns out she was schizophrenic and hadn't taken her medication that day and unfortunately had an episode in the middle of the water. It's always sad when somebody has a mental illness that affects them like that. Like you're trying to enjoy your ride and all of a sudden you're having panic attacks, you're freaking out. And, but I can't even imagine how scary that would have been for staff and customers as well who may not be experienced with understanding what that person is going through. Number two today goes to an employee who had to deal with the aftermath of something truly disgusting. Apparently in line at one of the rides a fully grown man decided to take a poop in the corner of uh, the pre-show. Which is pretty damn disgusting especially when you remember that Disney is filled with kids and kids are curious and they like to satisfy their curiosity by finding things and putting it in their mouth. Yeah, so one kid actually saw the poop and decided it was snack time. The mom rushed the kid to the staff washroom in a panic where the employees were just staring in shock. If I was the employee in that situation, I wouldn't do anything at all because I would just be in total shock. My mouth would just be like, like, is, is this real life right now? Did that guy really take a 
I and mean, finally, in a number one spot is a cast member who met their tragic end at one of the shows back in 1974. 18-year-old Deborah Gale Stone was working at the American Sings attraction at Disneyland at the end of the night. She got too close to the area of the stage by a moving wall and a stationary wall. And as the one wall moved, she got trapped between the two and it ended up being crushed. Nobody was in the theater with her, but the ride operator next door heard her screams and rushed to help. But unfortunately, they were too late. Eventually, the solid walls were replaced with, you know, breakable ones. Wants to prevent a tragedy like this? Want to prevent someone getting squished? I don't know who thought of this. There should be like a fail safe or like pressure sensors. Like, you know how you have a garage door and something's underneath it? It would go and then all of a sudden stop because there are sensors. Well, they definitely should have had one in place. Well, it was rumored that Deborah now haunts the attraction and now can be heard telling others to be careful. Starting off this countdown, we have the man with the cane. The man with the cane is an urban legend that has gotten passed on from employee to employee. So the legend is about a man with a cane that haunts the haunted mansion ride at Disney. So according to legend, back in the day, a man died in a plane crash. The plane crashed in a lake near the park, and now his spirit haunts the ride. On a number of occasions, cast members have seen this man on the ride. He can only be seen between the offload and onload points of the ride. And he just sits there alone, holding his cane in his lap, just staring straight ahead. They've also seen his spirit late at night, especially after closing. According to some psychics, this man is trapped between worlds. Coming in at number nine, we have the scripts. And if you guys are liking this video so far, then make sure to give it a big thumbs up because I said so, and it really helps so. So please hit that like button. So it's no shock that the cast members have memorized a script as to what they have to say. But what you probably didn't know is that they are given around three days to learn the whole lengthy script. And they also have to learn all the speeds and stops and controls of the ride that they're working on. And before actually getting to work on the ride, they have to practice the script in front of a trainer. And they have to do this until they get every single word right. If they accidentally say the word okay instead of all right, they have to start the whole script all over again from the beginning. Man, that would absolutely kill me. Like that sounds like torture. In our eighth spot, we have the masked characters. So in my last part to this video, I talked about how the masked characters have to stay in character at all times. Even if they're injured or literally dying, they can't just whip off their mask. They need to wait until they're out of the public's eye. Same thing goes if you're sick. Literally, workers are told to throw up in their mask if they're sick. Taking the head off is just not an option. Now, they do have a signal that they can do if they don't feel well or if they need assistance, and that's covering one eye with one hand and then raising the other arm in the air. Someone will see this and then come get them. Still. That does not sound pleasant at all. Moving on to number seven, we have the water cooler. Okay, this one grossed me out, not gonna lie. So this next Disney employee used to work at an office for Disney. And in the office, there was a water cooler that you could use to fill up your bottles before going on stage. Well, one day their manager was drinking the water when he said that it tasted a little stale, but he continued to drink the water anyways. About two hours later, another worker fills up their bottle, takes a sip, and spits out the water. Turns out that a freaking giant bullfrog had gotten into the water cooler tank and died in there. So they literally had been drinking dead bullfrog water for days until someone finally noticed. That's disgusting. In our sixth spot, we have the security. What not a lot of people realize is just how tight Disney's security really is. Disney actually has tons of undercover security guards. They are just dressed up and pose as tourists. In fact, one employee said that when she had a kid, Disney paid for her, her husband, and her kid to walk around the park undercover. That's like the coolest job ever. Like get paid to go on the rides and stuff and just spy on people. Also, everything is constantly being taped. Every second of your visit, you're on camera. Don't even try to do any funny business because Mickey's got eyes on you. We're now at our fifth and halfway mark with the costumes. Honestly, being a Disney costume character isn't that great. Like you're in the hot sun and heat in a heavy costume that other people have also sweated in. It gets worse. 
Most of the times, the costumes can't be washed. This is because they're made out of like fur or fancy fabric. The Beast from Beauty and the Beast costume is one that apparently never gets washed. So it's just sprayed with a bunch of disinfectants and a lot of cast members say that it reeks. And some employees have admitted to not wearing undergarments while in the costumes. Yikes. Yikes and more yikes. No thank you. And at number four, we have the language. Obviously, if you work at Disney, you have to keep it PG. There's no swearing or inappropriate behavior allowed. But they also have some other strange rules. Employees are not allowed to ever say that they saw any rats or pests or cockroaches at the park. You also can't ever say the word died. For example, one employee once said, my radio battery died and they got in so much trouble. You can't say the word at all, even if there's no bad meaning behind it. And if you do see like a mouse or something, you have to say things like, I found one of Mickey's friends. So everything is just always in code. In our third spot, we have the ride restrictions. So this story comes from a former Disney employee. Apparently, parents try to sneak their young kids on rides all the time, which is super dangerous. Like the height and age restriction is there for a reason. Just take this next incident, for example. So they were loading everyone onto the Space Mountain ride when they found a six month old baby inside of a bag. The parents have put the baby into the bag and tried to sneak them on the ride. Number one, the baby wouldn't have had a seatbelt or anything. So if the bag flew, well then, mm. Number two, babies or young kids can't go on certain rides because of shaken baby syndrome. Seriously, that could have resulted in serious brain damage. In our second spot, we have the ghost named George. Apparently, the Pirates of the Caribbean ride at Walt Disney World is haunted by a former worker who died there. Legend goes that George was a construction worker hired to help build the Pirates of the Caribbean ride. But during construction, he either fell off the set or was crushed by a piece of the set. He died instantly. Shortly after the theme park opened, a very sad and old looking woman was seen constantly riding this attraction alone. Turns out that this was George's mother. Now it's said that George's ghost haunts the ride and causes mischief. Apparently if you don't wish him good morning or good night or respect him, then he will make life tough for you. He has been blamed for causing a number of malfunctions with the ride. Now, some versions of the story say that the tall tower that's seen during the burning city scene is the piece of set that killed George. It's now referred to as George's Tower, and apparently his initials are carved into the base of that tower. No matter how many times people have attempted to cover up his initials, they will always reappear. And in our number one spot, we have the crocodiles. Okay, this fact literally blew my mind. So Kilimanjaro Safari is a safari attraction at Disney's Animal Kingdom in Florida. During one part of the safari, you go over a bridge with real crocodiles underneath. Well, according to Disney's protocol, if anyone falls into the crocodile pit during the safari, then they're to just drive off immediately. Like you don't even help them. You just let them get fed to the crocodiles. They do this because the crocodiles are normally fed from that spot. So as soon as something falls into the water from that spot, they're done. The crocodiles will have already attacked them before you can even help them. And two, they drive off so that the guests don't have to see the horror that's about to unfold. Still, that's incredibly dark. Like imagine your loved one falls in and then the driver just speeds off and you can't go help them. Starting off this countdown, we have the terrible situation. So according to this Disney employee, this incident took place on the 4th of July in 1995. On that day, there was a power glitch and all of the rides shut down at the same time. So all of them had to be evacuated, but that led to a pile up at the park. Everyone started panicking and trying to get out, especially this one guest who pulled out something sharp from their bag and started stopping guests so that they could get out of the park. Thankfully, I don't think anyone died that day, but still, what a traumatic thing that they had to go through. In our next spot, we have the injuries. One Disney employee shared on Reddit how rough it truly is to be a Disney mascot character. I mean, not only do they have to wear those costumes out in the blazing heat, but they also have to deal with whiny and bratty children and parents. And apparently, 
a lot of the time they get injured. One time a family attacked Pluto and pushed the character into the fountain. The employee suffered from a broken arm. In another instance, a woman playing Mickey Mouse suffered a bad neck injury after a guest kept patting her on the head. This caused the head to fall down and strain her neck. And the costumes themselves weigh 47 pounds. They're blamed for at least 282 injuries. So maybe just be gentle with them. But before I go any further, if you guys are liking this video, make sure to give it a big thumbs up. Come on, you know the drill, because it really helps us out. In our eighth spot, we have the working conditions. It's no shock that landing a job at Disney is very, very hard. Every year they receive thousands upon thousands of applications, but Here's the thing, if you do land a job at Disney, you have to be very, very careful because you can easily be fired. Here's a list of ways you could get fired. For starters, you could get fired for coming to work looking unacceptable. Workers always have to have their facial hair neat and trimmed. Their nails always have to be trimmed back and they can't have any visible piercings. They are super strict about this all. You can also get fired if you post something bad on social media about the company, if you're a face actor and you gain weight, or if you talk while in your costume. I mean, the last one I get, I don't want to be hugging Winnie the Pooh and then hear some old man talking. Anyways, this one employee said that he was fired from Disney after being caught eating a piece of pop that fell on their shirt. That's insane. I would be fired instantly if that's the case because I make a mess while I'm eating and then I just always eat the crumbs off my shirt. Sorry, not sorry. It's just scary how controlling Disney is over their employees. Moving on to number seven, we have the Disney point. Here's another ridiculous thing that Disney employees must do. No matter what, they always have to point with their index finger and middle finger. They can't point with just one finger because that's thought to be rude. So whenever they're showing people directions or something, they always have to point with two fingers. In fact, you could be fired if you're caught pointing with one finger. Coming in at number six, we have the bullying. Now, working at Disney is often thought of as a dream job. There are so many characters that aspire to be a character at Disney. I hate to break it to you, but apparently the work environment is fairly toxic. According to multiple employees, there's a lot of bullying that takes place behind the scenes, especially when it comes to the character actors. So there is a sense of hierarchy there. The girls that played the recent popular Disney princesses like Anna and Elsa are thought of as top tier. They're at the top of this Disney social pyramid. Then we have the actors that play the older characters like Snow White, Mary Poppins, Gaston, Peter Pan, you get it. And at the bottom of the pyramid are the mascot characters. Apparently the mascot characters are treated so poorly by other cast members. So yeah, I don't know if I would ever want to work there. Like I like teamwork and cooperation, not rivalry. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with the water. So if you've been to Disney, then you know some rides are surrounded by water. According to employees, that water, although it may not look like that, is extremely polluted and filthy. From people throwing up in there, to trash, to animal poop, it's got it all. And I don't know how often it gets clean. If it looks clean to them, then it's good enough. So maybe think twice before getting on a ride that sprays you with water. In our fourth spot, we have the costumes. So in my last video, I talked about how some of the bigger and elaborate mascot costumes can't really get washed. So instead, they just spray it with disinfectant. Well, here's a fact that will gross you out even more. Back in the day, cast members at Walt Disney had to obviously share costumes, but they also had to share undergarments. Until 2001, each costume had their own Disney sanctioned undergarments that they would have to share with each other. So gross. Because of that, a lot of workers were passing around STIs and STDs and stuff. So th that's when they stopped sharing underwear. Like that is highly, highly unsanitary and I'm glad that's not a thing anymore. Moving on at number three, we have the alligator problem. So once upon a time, Disney had a really bad alligator problem. They still kind of do, but obviously they didn't want park guests to worry about this. So they kept downplaying this problem. From 2006 to 2015, 220 alligators had to be removed from Disney World. Then from 2015, 2016, there was a massive increase of gators at the park. Since Disney is connected connected to waterways that intersect with lakes and rivers, alligators have an easier access to Disney than they admitted. That's when Disney was exposed for downplaying the seriousness of their alligator problem. Now, 
they are taking it seriously and have increased their safety measures. Coming in at number two, we have the dead body. So here's a fun fact. There is a dead body at Disneyland. Well, kind of. Let me explain. So according to employees, back in the day when the Pirates of the Caribbean ride was being built, they decided to use real human bones. Why? Because they thought that the fake bones looked too thick. They look real enough, so they brought in real ones. Apparently, they got these bones from UCLA Medical School. The real bones were used for a while, then eventually they were swapped out for fake ones. But the skull and crossbones featured in the ride behind a skeleton lounging in bed are still real. And in our number one spot, we have the Cursed Ride. Now, according to multiple different employees, the Haunted Mansion ride is actually cursed. So it all started back in the day when a visitor died on the ride. At one point, he stood up to try and reach a part of the attraction, but ended up falling off the ride and plummeted to his death. Other eerie things have happened there that have led them to believe the ride is cursed. Like how in Disneyland Paris, a worker was found dead at their Phantom Manor ride, which is basically like the Haunted Mansion ride at Disney World. His body was found two days later after his death. His cause of death was apparently electrocution. Still, they think this is all because of the Haunted Mansion ride curse. To make matters worse, the ride uses an authentic 14th century spell book containing real spells. So yeah, maybe this curse has something to do with that. Starting off this countdown, we have the boy in the Haunted Mansion. According to a number of Disney employees, there's a young boy that haunts the Haunted Mansion ride at Disneyland in California. So legend goes that this little boy was once caught spreading his mom's ashes in this ride. As we all know by now from the other videos I've done on Disney on this channel, this is fairly common. A number of people bring their deceased loved ones ashes and sprinkle them all over the park. This happened so often that Disney had to ban it and put protocols in place for it. Anyways, ever since then, the boy has been seen on this ride crying for his mother. He also has been spotted on the Pirates of the Caribbean ride as well. So what happened? Did the boy lose his mom at Disneyland? Who knows, but I think it's pretty freaky. Coming in at number nine, we have the Boy in the Haunted Mansion ride times two. So not only is the Haunted Mansion ride at Disneyland haunted, but the Disney World in Florida is haunted as well. And again, by another little boy. According to a number of employees, they have seen this ghostly little boy riding the ride. In fact, they caught him on camera. So a worker there was taking photos of the ride for the Walt Disney World virtual visit. Upon reviewing the photos, she saw a ghostly little child peeking its head out. Keep in mind, there were no children around when this photo was taken. That is absolutely horrifying. Just looking at that photo gives me the creeps. Moving on to number eight, we have Mr. One Way. Mr. One Way is the name given to the ghost that haunts the Space Mountain ride at Disneyland, California. Mr. One Way is apparently this tall lumberjack looking ghost with red hair and a red face. One legend states that this ghost will hang out in the queue for Space Mountain and just stand there silently. Whereas another version says that he actually will get on the ride only with a single rider, but then disappear before the ride ever finishes. One worker claims that they actually got proof of Mr. One Way on camera. Surveillance footage shows a ghostly figure in an empty seat as the ride takes off. And according to the man beside the empty seat, he was talking to a man five minutes prior to the ride. At the end of the ride, the man was gone. So he was concerned and talked to a Disney employee. And they said that there never was a man beside him. And then they told him the story of Mr. One Way. And then looking at the footage, they saw the creepy outline of Mr. One Way. No thanks, I'm never going on that ride ever again. Coming in at number seven today, we have Disco Debbie. This is another ghost that haunts the Space Mountain ride. Like, out of all the rides, why haunt that one? I don't know. Anyways, this ghost has been named Disco Debbie. Apparently, she's the spirit of a cast member that passed away on this ride. You know it's Debbie you're seeing because she gives off a green glow. I guess that's why they named her Disco Debbie, because she's like shining like a disco ball. I don't know. Anyways, apparently a number of guests have seen this woman through the old window that showed the star field in the indoor waiting area. Of course, they just thought she was part of the ride, but no, she's not. In our fourth spot today, we have the People Mover Ghost. The People Mover Ride was a transport attraction that was up and running at Tomorrowland in Disneyland, California until 1995. 
Only a month after it opened in 1967, a guest tripped and fell onto the tracks and was hit by an oncoming train and sadly killed. Apparently now the ghost of this guy haunts Tomorrowland and he likes to torment the guests, but not everyone. Only teens with blonde hair. I guess that's his type. A number of people have had this ghostly boy pull at their blonde hair. So all my blonde babes out there, you better watch out. In our third spot today, we have the ladies. The ladies is the name given to a group of white haired ladies that haunt the grounds of Disney. We don't know who they are or why they haunt Disney, but they do. They say that when these ladies appear, a sense of dread can be felt by whoever sees them. So far, they haven't done anything sinister, but like, we don't know what they want with the park. Also, they show up periodically. Like, they may be there for one day and then not show themselves until several years later. Maybe they're just a friendly group of old ladies that love Disney and still want to visit the park from beyond the grave. Let's hope it's that and that they're not like seeking revenge on Disney and the park goers. Hey, maybe they're Walt Disney's friends and they just meet up with him every year for a cup of tea, who knows? In our second spot today, we have the woman in white. The woman in white is the name given to a lady often wearing a 19th century white gown. She apparently haunts Main Street at Disneyland, but we for sure know that this lady is a nice ghost. Legend goes that on a number of occasions, she has guided lost children to the Disneyland Baby Care Center, where they were then reunited with their parents. Reunited and it feels so good. Sorry. In 2016, a grandma and her grandson were at Animal Kingdom when a wild snake fell from a tree and bit the grandson. Now, he was fine, the snake wasn't venomous. But the grandmother went into cardiac arrest after seeing this all happen and sadly she passed away. Wouldn't that be a terrifying encounter? Like you go to Disney with a relative looking for a good time and then you end up injured and your relative dead. I feel so sorry for that family. The family of course sued Disney World because turns out that the snake was a local Florida serpent and somehow made it onto the resort. In our ninth spot today, we have the big brawl. And if you guys are liking this video so far, then why don't you smash that like button? Imagine celebrating Christmas at Disney World only to encounter a real life Scrooge. So back in 2015, an old man was waiting for his food at a cafe in Disney World when he became tired and grumpy. And no, not like one of the seven dwarves. He was fed up saying it was taking too long. So. What did he do? He shoved one of the managers and started a huge fight among them all. At one point, he got tackled down. People were so scared that they fled the restaurant without even paying for their meals. So they dined and dashed at Disney. What a little rebel. In the end, the man was arrested and thrown out of Disney. Thankfully, only a few were injured in this fight. But still, imagine witnessing that fight on a time of holiday cheer. I bet he got cold in his stocking. Also, since when is Disney open on Christmas? Is that a thing that I just never knew? Let me know in the comments below. In our eighth spot today, we have the cleanliness. So Disney parks seem very well maintained and clean, right? Like there's no graffiti, hardly any litter on the grounds, and the rides seem to be well kept. Well, yes and no. According to a cast member, all the locations that a visitor can see are kept super clean, but the areas they don't see are disgusting. For example, apparently the inaccessible parts of the Haunted Mansion ride are gross. Like they are dusty, filled with cobwebs, and they have a nasty stench. And no, that was not part of the attraction. And they even found asbestos there. But obviously the park guests aren't supposed to know that. So it's okay, right? No, I'm sorry, that's gross. According to the same worker, every time she came home from her shift, she stunk and had to take a shower immediately. Yikes. Coming in our seventh spot, we have Splash Mountain. Disney has strict protocols in place to keep all its guests safe. Most of the injuries that have occurred on rides have been a result of people not listening to the safety protocols, like standing up in a ride or unbuckling themselves during the rides, etc. Sadly, this happened to a man riding the Splash Mountain ride. According to a Disney employee, he tried to get out of the ride and ended up getting struck by the raft behind him. He died from the impact. Police said it was a very strange incident, and as a result, Disney had to put even stricter protocols in place. In our fourth spot today, we have the ghost of Walt Disney. According to a number of employees, they believe that the ghost of Walt Disney haunts his park. In fact, a ghost was supposedly caught on security camera footage. You can see this ghostly figure just casually strolling through Disney. Take a look. 
Security caught this weird ghost on tape and immediately asked others what they thought it could be. There has been some debate on it, like some say it's a glitch or a monitor burn or a reflection, whereas others believe it's the ghost of Walt Disney himself. Or Javier Cruz, a cast member that lost his life in 2004 during a parade flow at Disneyland. But what do you guys think of this? Is this real footage of a Disney ghost? Let me know what you think in the comments below. Coming in at number three, we have the cover up. According to a former Disney World College Program cast member, there once was a man who took his life in one of the Disney hotel rooms. And Disney used its magic to cover it all up. So basically, the room in which it happened had its door and windows covered with a pardon our dust renovation sign. When police arrived, they had a bunch of costumed characters and cast members go to one section of the hotel for a meet and greet to distract the guests from seeing the police come into the building. Apparently, Disney constantly does this. They always divert your attention when something traumatic happens. For example, another employee said that they used fire jugglers to distract people when an animal control officer had to get a venomous snake out of the hotel's water fountain. And this guy only had 15 minutes to do it while the show was going on. Honestly, it just seems super stressful working for Disney. I swear, some Disney workers are like trained as if they're part of the FBI or something like that. In our second spot, we have the stunt gone wrong. According to a number of articles, the Hollywood Studios Indiana Jones epic stunt spectacular show was one of the most dangerous shows at Disney. Also, what a name, Hollywood Studios Indiana Jones epic stunt spectacular show. Geez, say that 10 times fast. Now, why is this? Well, a number of stunt performers have gotten badly injured in this action-packed show. Apparently, one performer fell 30 feet to the ground after his support cable broke. Another time, a different employee fell 25 to 50. Another time, a different performer fell 25 feet to the concrete. And a third fell 25 feet to the ground after a prop ladder broke. Thankfully, those performers all survived. But in 2009, one performer passed away after performing a tumbling roll. For this trick, the performer had to jump in the air, dive over another performer, and then tuck and roll onto a mat. But something went wrong, and the performer ended up landing wrong and snapping their neck. That is absolutely heartbreaking and terrifying. And in our number one spot today, we have the Haunted Dolls. I think that the scariest ride in Disney would have to be It's a Small World. Like, take a look at those terrifying dolls. And apparently, they're haunted, okay? According to a number of Disney employees, they have seen the dolls in the ride change positions, disappear, or even move when the ride is off. Some even say that their hair appears to grow on its own, as if they're alive. In fact, every couple of months, Disney's cosmetology team goes in and cuts the doll's hair because they grow. But they say it's just the humidity combined with gravity and then that causes the hair to stretch. Either way, it's freaking creepy. According to one employee, they arrive for their morning shift only to find that a couple of dolls switched places during the night and some vanished without a trace. So listen here, Annabelle, okay? Leave those damn dolls alone. Don't touch Disney. Starting off this countdown, we have Animal Kingdom. Disney's Animal Kingdom is said to be the largest theme park in the world, covering 580 acres. There you can find an abundance of cute animals. But here's the thing, the park once got in a lot of trouble when it first opened in 1998, because they experienced a wave of animal deaths. In a short time frame, a bunch of the park animals were dropping dead. Now, Disney claimed it was only 12 animals, but in reality, it was closer to 30. This included rhinos, hippos, antelope, gazelles, and cheetah cubs. Now, you're probably wondering, how come these animals passed away? Well, mainly neglect on Disney's behalf. Other animals died after fighting each other, and others ingested toxic substances. Let's just hope that now Disney treats the animals better. Moving on to number nine, we have Thunder Mountain. In 2003, something really freaking dark happened on the Big Thunder Mountain Railroad roller coaster at Disneyland. Say that five times fast. Railroad roller coaster. <laughs> During this ride, one of the wheels fell off and the ride crashed. As a result, it took the life of a man named Marcelo Torres and it injured 10 other guests. And guess what? 
After the California Division of Occupational Safety and Health investigated this accident, they found that the mechanic and ride operators were at fault. This incident was a result of budget cuts at the park. The wheel needed fixing before, and the mechanic did cheap work on the roller coaster. And apparently, a half an hour before the incident occurred, the ride operators heard a weird noise coming from the ride, but ignored it. In the end, the Torres family sued Disney and they won the battle. Imagine that though, Disney trying to cut corners on their rides. Like, that doesn't make me feel safe at all. In our 8th spot today, we have the initiation. Believe it or not, but Disney is known to have some pretty terrifying hazing and initiation rituals for new staff members. But the initiation is not what you think. The staff are mentally and physically tortured. For starters, they go through this intense training process in which they learn all the do's and don'ts of being an employee, like learning scripts word for word without adding words or substitutes or like ums, you can't do any of that. Trust me, it's worse than you think. On top of that, they are then forced to smile all the time. And they will get in trouble if caught not smiling. And of course, during this week or so of hell, you got other employees pulling pranks, making you wish you never applied for this job in the first place. Moving on, at number 7 we have the Ghost of Epcot. As you probably have noticed by now from the other parts in this series, Disney is incredibly haunted. Like there are hundreds of ghosts that haunt the parks. For this one, let's talk about the little girl and boy that haunt Spaceship Earth at Epcot. A number of people have seen a small girl with long blonde hair riding in one of the cars. They've also seen a boy run in front of them only to vanish into thin air. Pretty creepy, am I right? In our sixth spot today, we have California Screamin' Attraction. Way too many accidents have happened on Disney rides. It's actually pretty scary and makes me never want to go on roller coasters ever again. Now, let's take a look at the California Screaming Ride, which is at Disney's California Adventure. Some of you probably know it by the new name, Incredicoaster, because they renamed it to that for some reason. Anyways, there was one pretty creepy incident on this ride where it malfunctioned and a train ended up smashing into another. As a result, 15 guests were sent to the hospital. Like imagine that, you're at Disney chilling, trying to have a good time, and next thing you know it, you're in the hospital. It's horrifying. We're now at our fifth and halfway mark with the Mickey and Friends parking structure. In 2012, a young man's body was found at Disneyland's Mickey and Friends parking structure. At first, it was thought that he took his own life, but no one saw him jump, so they don't really know what happened. Now, here's the eerie thing. This structure has been the site for a number of deaths. In 2012, a man fell from one of the floors and passed away. And in 2010, a man purposefully jumped from the top of the structure. It's like it's cursed or something. In our fourth spot, we have the hijacking gone wrong. On June 4th, 1983, an 18-year-old man and his friend decided to steal a rubber emergency raft from Tom Sawyer's Island. They went into the restricted cast-only area of the park to get it. Then they hopped on it and took it for a ride until it capsized and one of the boys sadly drowned. In the end, the victim's mom sued Disneyland for letting her intoxicated son onto the premise. And also, she sued the travel agency, who she claimed didn't arrange the trip properly and weren't supervising the teens. In the end, she ended up winning the lawsuits. Moving on to number three, we have the Disney Hotel. Another place associated with Disney where a number of people have died. Sadly, most of the deaths were self-inflicted. For starters, in 1994, a 74-year-old man jumped from the 8th floor balcony to his death. In 1996, a 23-year-old man either jumped or fell to his death. It still hasn't been discovered which one it was. And in 1998, an employee jumped from the same floor as that previous man. But this employee actually survived the jump. I don't know what's up with this hotel, but countless guests have died there makes it seem like something sinister is going on there, or it's cursed. In our second spot today, we have the Tower of Terror. Of course, this ride is haunted. I mean, it's pretty creepy on its own. I swear, ghosts like to haunt the scary rides, like the Haunted Mansion, the Tower of Terror, you get it. Why don't they haunt the little teacup spinning ride or the flying Dumbo ride, you know? Anyways, rumor has it among employees that they often see a ghost wandering around the Tower of Terror after hours. On a number of occasions, staff have seen this man. They call out to him, but he doesn't reply. 
Then he disappears right in front of their eyes. Yeah, no thank you, no. And in our number one spot today, we have the Roger Rabbit ride. In September of 2000, a young park guest ended up falling out of Disney's Roger Rabbit's cartoon spin ride. Now, he did survive the initial accident, but was left with very serious injuries. When he fell out of the car, the ride rolled over him and folded his body in half. He was stuck under there for 10 minutes before someone came to free him. He went into cardiac arrest and was left with serious brain damage. After that incident, Incident, he never walked or talked again. He passed away several years later as a result of these injuries. Of course, Disney is to blame for this. They said medical personnel arrived on the scene way too late. Things may have been different if they got there faster. This accident caused a lot of their emergency protocols to change. In our it spot, we have the injuries. Now, if you work for Disney as one of the characters and you get injured on the job, well, guess what? You can't receive medical assistance until you're out of the public's eye. This is just another crazy rule that Disney has. You have to stay in character no matter what. They all do this to preserve the illusion of Disney and magic. I mean, how horrifying would it be if all of a sudden Mickey rips off his head and starts like gushing blood in front of kids? Now, one worker was told before accepting a job as Water Goofy on a Disney cruise, he had to agree that if for some reason he started drowning, he had to be carried away before lifeguards could remove his costume and perform CPR. So he could literally be dying in the costume and need medical attention right away but Disney won't allow that. Moving on to number seven, we have the repairs. Ever notice how Disney is pretty much always in great condition? I mean, some of the rides are super old, but they don't look it. Well, according to a former Disney employee, every night workers go around the park touching up any and everything. During the day, the workers know if there's any graffiti anywhere in the park or if there's paint chipping anywhere. They write it down and let the night shift workers know, and then they go around fixing it all. I mean, I just took in that I've never seen graffiti at Disney, and that's exactly why. But also, it's a very tedious job. They have to go around the full park and get it all done before the park reopens in the morning. Moving on to number six, we have the fire accident. So this next story comes from a Disney employee that worked as an outdoor vendor. One night while watching a fireworks show, Tinkerbell got stuck on the wire above the castle since she had been hoisted up because she was flying in the air. But her wire was stuck and she almost burned to death up there. There was a whole Indiana Jones portion of the show and in it they had large fireballs. Well, they couldn't stop the show to get Tinkerbell down, so they kind of just left her there and turned off her spotlight so no one could see what was going on, and then they prayed for the best. But like I said before, it's a risk you take while working for Disney. You know, you could be dying and they're not gonna save your life if it interferes with their show. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with the cursed ride. Believe it or not, but there is a ride at Disney that all workers believe is cursed. This is the Matterhorn. First off, this ride is responsible for the most fatal and non-fatal incidents. In 1964, a teen on the ride stood up in the bobsled and then died after being thrown out from the ride. Then another time the ride caught on fire, injuring a family in their sled. And another visitor died after she was launched out of her seat and then hit by another bobsled. More on this later. You think they would have fixed this ride after the first couple of deaths, but no, they blame it on a curse instead. They should just kind of look into the safety of that ride because I don't know if it's that safe. In our fourth spot, we have the death on Space Mountain. Okay, this one is pretty dark. So in 1979, a woman died on the Space Mountain ride. She was only 31 at the time. So basically after the ride was done, this woman didn't feel well at all but she couldn't get out of her seat by herself. The ride operators were trying to get her out of her seat, but the other workers weren't notified, so they ended up sending her on the ride again. This time when the ride was done, she was completely unconscious. It literally put her in a coma. She passed away a week later. Now, technically this wasn't Disney's fault. I mean, part of it was. They had a lawsuit filed against them, but it was dismissed because apparently while on the ride, a tumor dislodged from her heart and then traveled to her brain. 
Yeah, I know, that's super scary. In our third spot, we have the ghost of Walt Disney. So for those of you who don't know, Disney had a secret apartment. It was located just above the firehouse on Main Street, USA. This apartment was built so that he could watch the guests enjoy his creation without being overwhelmed by the crowds. Now, his apartment was so secretive that him and his family and special guests were the only ones allowed in there. In fact, photographers were rarely allowed inside. As a result, there are hardly any photos of Mr. Disney and his family in this place. Well, after the passing of Walt Disney in 1966, cast members decide to place a small lamp at the window. They keep the light on to symbolize that Disney's spirit is still alive at Disneyland. And this may be indeed true, because it's said that his ghost still haunts his apartment. A number of employees have seen Disney while cleaning the apartment. Apparently one worker was in there and then the lights started flickering on and off. Another worker said she heard a voice say, don't forget, I am still here. And that's when she probably quit because that's terrifying. In our second spot, we have Dolly's Dip. So in 1984, Regina, otherwise known as Dolly Young, was riding on the Matterhorn when her seatbelt came undone. She was then thrown from the ride and hit and killed by another bobsled. Now, there's still much debate as to how her seatbelt came undone. Some say that she unbuckled it to help her children who were in another car. Others think that the seatbelt just wasn't buckled properly in the first place. Either way, this accident was super tragic. But that's not all. Now Disney employees claim that Dolly's spirit haunts the ride. The area in which she died is now called Dolly's Dip, and employees hate going there by themselves. Those that do have claimed to feel like someone is watching them. Others say that the lights in Dolly's Dip never work properly anymore. Now, everyone kind of just avoids that area at all costs. And in our number one spot, we have the tragic accident. So this story was shared on Reddit by a man who once worked at Disney as a VIP tour guide. So he was in the city hall when two women came in with two little girls. One of the girls was in a wheelchair, the other girl looked very depressed. Both of them had cuts and bruises all over them. The two women with them were nurses from the hospital that the girls had just been to. They were there to ask for a refund for the girls' tickets. Now, here's where the story gets very sad. So apparently the girls had been with their mom and dad at Epcot, but on their way home, they got in a really bad car accident. They both lost their parents in the crash. So the nurses had come to try and get a refund for the tickets so that the girls could get money to try and go home. Now, how dark is that? That's extremely sad. Okay, so starting us off, number 10 is a family who, like many others, decide to book a table at Cinderella's castle for dinner. However, unlike other dinners here, this one had a far from fairy tale ending. During the dinner, the husband announced that his wife of 15 years had been cheating on him. He took their kids and left her right there. And probably with the bill as well, well, it serves her right in my opinion. Our number nine is an employee who witnessed something totally horrible horrifying and this person that they witnessed doesn't deserve of taking care of anything living. Well this person who wanted to go on rides they decided you know what I'm not gonna let things hold me back. I'm gonna put my objects and I'm gonna put my stuff in a locker so I don't have to worry about it and I can go on rides I don't have to worry about them. Well apparently one of the things that this person put in a locker was their dog. First of all I didn't know you can go to a theme park and take your dog and secondly how does this make common sense? How does this make sense at all? Putting a dog into a locker without any air. I mean, when you go back at the end of the day to pick up your dog because you were too busy ignoring your responsibilities, when you go pick up your dog, that dog, there's no way it's still alive. Absolutely horrible. And for a staff member to kind of witness that is insane. Taking the number eight spot today is a grown up who went to a park dressed as Snow White. Uh, and I mean, like, sure, okay, people do dress up as characters all all the time at the parks. I mean, it, it's a thing. Well, except this person got super hammered and pretend like she was the official Snow White and she started signing autographs, taking pictures, and wreaking havoc at the park. I don't think that I remember Tipsy being one of the seven dwarfs. This is absolutely horrifying, especially if you're a child and that is your like hero 
and they're stammering and stumbling and falling over. It's definitely a sight not to see. Coming in at number seven is something that, believe it or not, is a regular occurrence. More than a few times, staff have had to stop people from entering the park because they were caught bringing in human ashes inside of the gates with the intention of spreading them somewhere at the park. They just wanted their loved ones to rest forever at the happiest place on earth, which in theory is uh, sweet, but in seriousness, in reality, it's kind of creepy. Like you're spreading a dead person's ashes on rides or in the water or on the sidewalk. Spreading human remains at an amusement park, I mean, this isn't something recommended. It's something you shouldn't do. Besides, apparently, they just end up getting vacuumed up by staff. So what's the point of sprinkling them on a ride that just gets cleaned up anyways or sprinkle it on a sidewalk? that just gets swept up at the end of the day. All right, halfway there, and at number five is the peak of stupidity. No offense, but apparently multiple guests have asked employees to turn on the AC outside because they thought that all of Disney World was legitimately under a glass dome. Like, this is like the Truman Show. Like, uh, can you turn the AC and point it outside, please? Because it's pretty hot out here. I mean, it's 35 degrees. Let's make it down. Let's bring it down to 20. Let's bring it down a few notch. We're sweating out here. I'm not sure if that's how it works. I don't know if putting AC outside would work. Unless, you know what, what if the world turned on AC outside in the summertime? Would that, like, cool the earth? Uh, I'm, I'm down to try it. I'm, I'm down to waste a few grand in uh, hydro bills. All right, moving on. Number four, an employee checking over the Space Mountain ride. Well, they found more than they expected. They found an entire glass eye in one of the rockets. As for the person who lost it, I'm not sure how they didn't realize, but then again, if you have a glass eye and it just falls out, it, it, I guess the person didn't feel it. What if they're on the ride, they're going so fast and there's so much wind, it popped out and they thought maybe it was just a gust of wind. Uh, you can't really see your eye in your, in your eye unless you're passing by a mirror. So I guess maybe I can see how they lost their glass eye, but imagine someone like picking that up. I don't know if, I, I guess there wouldn't be like blood on it or anything like that, but it's a real glass eye. It would for sure freak me out, and at least it wasn't a real eye. Coming in at number three is someone else who lost an assistive device. During a ride at the Animal Kingdom, an object was seen flying past customers. Nobody had any idea what it was until after the ride, one of the customers approached an employee and explained that somehow, okay, get this. Their prosthetic leg had fallen off during a ride. I mean, okay, maybe, maybe an eye can come out. It's just psh, Maybe, maybe an arm can fall off, but your leg is in the ride, in the seat, like it's on the floor. How does that come out? Unless it's one of those rides where you're sitting and your legs are dangling and it just, it just pops out. It kind of, kind of sucks. Sucks for the person that lost their prosthetic leg because now they are having an even more tougher time getting around. I hope they found it and I hope it's okay because those things sound like it can be very expensive. Nearing the end on this list, number two is actually a pretty sad story. One day back in 1973, two brothers snuck out and hid on Tom Sawyer's Island after the park had closed. I, I don't know if people are doing this as like challenges, but you hear about these stories about people staying in theme parks after they close. I mean, it wouldn't be the hardest thing to do. Well, when they tried to swim back, one of the brothers wasn't able to make it and he ended up drowning. I, and I mean, it's after hours, everything's closed. There's no one there to save them, no one to hear them scream. His body was found actually the next morning when staff members were getting the park ready to open up. Imagine being an employee, you're like 17 years old or 18 years old, uh, you're opening up a ride and you see like potentially a person floating in the water. I definitely wouldn't approach it. I'd call the authorities or managers to like get that situation situated. Absolutely terrifying and I, I, it would leave me with so many questions. And finishing off today's list, in at number one, we have, well, if you've ever noticed that the characters always have an escort to walk with them, you know, throughout the park, well, this story is why. Like, you know how you see like Snow White going by and you see like four security guards, or you see like four people around them, just to make sure this person's safe? Well, one guest got into a fight with his buddy because he didn't believe that they were people inside of the suits. Like, you must have been so drunk or so drugged up that you thought, like, Oh wait, is there someone inside of that suit or is that a real character? Well, he thought Goofy was actually a giant dog in a hat 
And to prove his point, he stabbed Goofy. Goofy was stabbed. I have no defense for this guy. It's complete and utter stupidity at its pinnacle point. Either he knew he was stabbing a person or he thought he was stabbing a dog. So either way, both situations, uh, not favorable for yourself in society. I'm pretty sure you deserve to be locked up in four confined walls at that point and just spend at least 25 years to think about what you've just done. I mean, you actually thought you were stabbing a, a dog, like a, like a giant dog in a suit. Makes absolutely no sense. Well, because of that story, and probably because of many other stories that are of violence towards these employees, well, that's the reason why there is security there having to protect them. <music> 